Patrick Pacheco brings us a sneak peek at the production of Hair, now playing in Toronto. Stay tuned for more on stage after this. Now, last week we gave you a preview of the highly anticipated debut of the stage adaptation of Lord of the Rings in Toronto. Well, that city is also hosting a major revival of the rock musical classic, Hair. While in Toronto, contributing correspondent Patrick Pacheco caught up with some of the folks from that production, and he brings us this preview. When the moon is in the devil's house, and Jupiter aligns with the Mars. It's the movie version of the 1968 tribal love rock musical, Hair. That rare musical that not only enjoyed a healthy Broadway run, but whose toe-tapping score gained chart-topping success. And now, nearly 40 years after its first staging, the seminal rock musical, with the blessings of its creative team, is about to see a major revival at Cannes Stage here in Toronto at one of Canada's largest not-for-profit theaters. The company's artistic producer harbors an early fondness for the show. I managed to fill two school buses, took them to see hair, had the time in my life, kind of changed my life, kind of helped push me in this direction of wanting to do theater for the rest of my life. Um, the downside of it was that once all the parents found out that I'd taken their poor precious children to see a show with all those nude people in it and all those nude hippies, that I was expelled for a week. His desire to mount the show now is still based on that infectious score and its pop success for a number of 60s groups. So for me, what I find most interesting about it is that there isn't a day that goes by in any city in North America that I've been in that if you turn on the radio, you are not going to hear some song from Hair somewhere. Almost guaranteed it's on a playlist of some radio station. Despite a number of efforts to revive the musical, Hair lyricist James Rado and to a greater extent composer Galt McDermott have been reluctant to give it the okay. After a long search, they settled on director Robert Pryor and choreographer Stephen Hughes. I remember when, you know, in approaching Galt's uh, apartment in Manhattan, I said, I don't, with the two guys, you know, in tow, I said, uh, I was kind of dejected. I, I said, ah, this is going to be another one of those things. So we walked in, and within a half hour, Galt had said yes to these two guys. I was totally amazed. And while we all know that the times, they are a change in, perhaps the backdrop of an unpopular war and government eavesdropping may prove to be a homecoming of sorts. That's, and it's the same situation that uh, happened in uh, 1968, that, that, I mean, that existed in 1968, the same kind of feeling in the air about the uh, government and people out in the streets, of course, marching against the war and uh, thinking that it's unjust and so forth. Whether Jupiter aligns with Mars is yet to be seen, but clearly, fingers are crossed. Hey! There's, there's a whole bunch of kismet that kind of came into place on this production that, uh, that I think really bodes well. I mean, we've got a lot of really like-minded people around, uh, around doing it. Hair opens in Toronto this coming Thursday with a run through at least June 17th. So is this landmark American musical going to have a new dawn? If it does, it's going to have to come north of the border. In Toronto, I'm Patrick Pacheco for On Stage.